thank you all for inviting me again to beautiful Korea and thanks to Dr. Hakyan Moon and Dr. Yu for their leadership in the global fight for religious freedom. Wherever communism has been in power, from the Soviet Union to North Korea and uh, China, it has arrested, kept in jail, tortured, raped, and killed thousands of believers of all religions. But what of the countries where communism has not been in power? Much less known than the brutal killing of believers in Soviet Union or China is their spiritual killing in countries where large communist parties such as the Italian or the Japanese communist parties were not in power. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 27, do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. In democratic countries, communists could not kill the bodies, but they try to kill the souls. I come from a country, Italy, which had for almost 50 years the largest communist party in the West. The main leader of that party, Palmiro Togliatti, developed a strategy to deal with religion which had the full blessing of the Soviet Union. In fact, Togliatti was so loyal to the Soviet Union that when he died in 1974, a large Russian city, Stavropol, was renamed after him as Togliatti. And courtesy of Vladimir Putin, it keeps this name even today. <clears throat> the Italian communist strategy to deal with religion was based on uh, three principles. First, do not attack religion publicly and find some religious figures who will become uh, members of the party and act as uh, useful idiots, as they say, useful for claiming that the party is not against uh, religious liberty. Second, at the same time, continue discreetly inside the party to spread the Marxist ideology and atheistic propaganda. In fact, while smiling to the believers, Toyati put in charge a man called Ambrogio Dodini, an academic and senator, to organize inside the party, not very visible from outside, a vast enterprise of propaganda of atheism whose consequences in Italy we can feel even today. Third, while smiling at the believers who are either friendly with or soft on the communism, Toyati's strategy was to attack mercilessly any religious organization, Catholic or otherwise, that would oppose communism ideologically. I published my first book on uh, Reverend Moon and the Unification Church in Italian in 1987. I collected hundreds of uh, press clippings and clearly detected that the campaign 
labeling the Unification Church as a cult had been largely organized by the communist and the leftist media, which had been disturbed by the Unification Church anti-communist activity. And this happened in Italy, but the same happened in France, where the most active newspaper in attacking the Unification Church was the organ of the French Communist Party, L'Humanité. Outside of Japan, not many know that the Japanese Communist Party has been for many years among the largest non-ruling communist parties in the world. And today it may well be the second largest after the one in India. In 1951, following instructions from the Soviet Union and China, the Japanese Communist Party adopted the 1951 program, which included the famous words, it is a mistake to think that Japan's liberation and democratic transformation can be achieved through peaceful means. The program was adopted during the Korean War as Stalin and Mao hoped that the violence by the communists in Japan will create a distraction for the United States. The PSIIA, the Public Security Intelligence Agency, Japan National Intelligence Agency, reported that following the 1951 program, the Communist Party was responsible for disturbances and murders in several cities. The firm reaction of the Japanese uh, authorities, police, and uh, intelligence persuaded the Japanese Communist Party to withdraw the 1951 program. And one of the byproducts of this change of strategy was to adopt uh, uh, tactics that many scholars have compared to the ones of the Italian Communist Party, including uh, on religion. Party publications started insisting that Japanese communists were not against religion. By 2007, the party's organ, Shimbu Nakahata, was advertising a quote with party members including the Buddhist priest, priest's wife, Shinto priest, Christians, Tenrikyo devotees, and other religious people. At the same time, just like in Italy, inside the party, members continued to study the classics of Marx, which were obviously uh, atheistic. And well after it had repudiated the 1951 program, the Japanese Communist Party kept in its central committee men called Bunkishi Okada, who had been one of the founders of the anti-religious struggle alliance and the creator of the Japan Militant Atheist League. However, religious liberty was not to be granted to all religions. In the same year, 2007, when it boasted it had so many religionists as members, the Japanese Communist Party also wrote that it wanted the Unification Church to be dealt with as a criminal group. But in fact, the Japanese Communist Party's plan to destroy the Unification Church had started much earlier. As we heard in 1968, Reverend Moon founded the International Federation for Victory Over Communism, the VOC. It played a key role 
in uh, containing the Japanese Communist Party and its socialist allies. And we already heard uh, from Mr. Watanabe how important it was the role played by VOC in the 1978 uh, uh, gubernatorial elections in uh, Kyoto. That was 1978 and in 1979, as we also heard, the, the top KGB agent in Japan, Stanislav Levchenko, defected to the United States and started revealing that prominent Japanese politicians were paid Soviet agents. And that reinforced the VOC idea that Japan needed an effective anti-espionage legislation. After the fall of the Soviet Union, documents in the Soviet archives confirmed that Levchenko had been absolutely truthful and right. But at that time, uh, the Socialist Party accused the VOC in uh, combination with the American CIA of having uh, uh, orchestrated the Levchenko incident. And the VOC sued uh, the Socialist Party and to avoid a humiliating defeat, the lawyer representing the Socialist Party had to persuade its clients to settle with VOC and pay two million yen. This lawyer never forgave the VOC or the Unification Church and his name was Hiroshi Yamaguchi. In 1987, writing in a socialist uh, publication, Yamaguchi called other leftist lawyers uh, to join his effort uh, to establish an association against the so-called spiritual sales, i.e. the sales of certain objects at uh, high prices, not representing their material value which the Unification Church was accused of. He wrote, that's Yamaguchi Wars, in a socialist publication, he wrote that the money obtained from this, meaning the so-called spiritual sales, is used to finance the Unification Church and the VOC campaign to enact anti-espionage legislation. So this is the real origin, uh, Yamaguchi said it himself. This is the real origin of the organization later called the, the uh, National Network of Lawyers Against Spiritual Sales. So and this is the organization which today is coordinating all the campaign against the Unification Church Family Federation in Japan after the Abe assassination. So why was this organization started? It was started to destroy the VOC and its support for anti-espionage legislation. Others have mentioned this, but let me return to this point. This uh, last month, sorry, on November 2022, journalists called Soichiro Tahara and Communist Party current chairperson Katsuo Shi discussed the Unification Church Family Federation issue and presented the post-Abe uh, assassination campaign as the final war against the Unification Church. She said that it started at least in 1978 with the election for governor of Kyoto. This time, he said, we will fight thoroughly and completely until we win over the struggle. Certainly, not all are communists in this Japanese war 
against the Unification Church. I wrote in social media that not all Japanese against the Unification Church are communists, but all communists are against the Unification Church. But this is not even the point. My story, as I hope, clarified who started the war, why the war was started, and who leads this army. We should, however, not miss a very important point. Communism does not win all its wars. Even the mighty Soviet Union was not immortal. The Japanese militant atheist league proclaimed to be at war with God. But wars against God have one defining feature. They cannot be won. In Japan today, what they believe they are winning is a battle. But they will not win the war. Religions normally last more than anti-religious ideologies, and the last law is there. So today, we all feel like we are Japanese members of the Family Federation, but it is not enough to proclaim it. Those who really love religious freedom should stand up, join us, and defend those who are under threat. And those who are under threat today are in Japan. Thank you.